Thank you very much. And now I'd like to recognize the gentleman uh, from Alabama, Mr. Strong. Thank you, Chairman Babin, Ranking Member Lofgren, uh, Administrator Nelson. Thank you and your staff for being here today to discuss NASA's FY25 budget request. I have the privilege of representing Alabama's 5th Congressional District, home to NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center. I'd like to take this opportunity to express my sincere gratitude to all the hardworking civil servants and contractors at Marshall. I would like to also note that I have full faith and confidence uh, in Marshall's newest director, Joseph Pel Pelfrey. Mr. Administrator, following a successful uncrewed SLS test flight in late 2022, your agency planned to launch a crewed lunar uh, flyby mission Artemis II in November of 24. Earlier this year, your administration revealed that because of various hardware issues, the Artemis II mission is now delayed until September of 2025, nearly one year behind schedule. Mr. Administrator, what specifically led to this nearly one year delay and what impact will this have on future Artemis missions? Safety. We do not fly until it's ready. And we never will as long as I'm around. Uh, I've seen uh, seven of my friends uh, suddenly uh, be killed in the Challenger disaster that was 10 days after the flight that I was on. Uh, we are sending a whole new spacecraft and a whole new rocket to the moon. Uh, we're going to make sure that that heat shield is functioning as it should be because they are coming in hot and fast. They're coming in at Mach 32 and it's 5,000 degrees. Uh, this new spacecraft Orion is a very complicated uh, machine and we're just simply not going to fly it until it's ready. Thank you. Thank you. Delays always lead to need for more money and in a physically constrained environment, that, that concerns me. As the leader of NASA, what actions have you taken to ensure that Artemis III uh, mission and future Artemis missions stay on schedule? Well, again, we're not going to fly them until they're ready, but in this case, Artemis III is the first landing on the moon. We have contracted with SpaceX for September of 26. That's the contractual date. But if they're not ready, obviously we're not going to fly. Okay. Marshall is home to the best propulsion experts in the nation. Marshall has also pro uh, proven successful in manufacturing projects uh, such as the rapid analysis and manufacturing propulsion technology. How is NASA leveraging additive manufacturing to best optimize technology for future moon to Mars missions and deep space exploration? Marshall has a brilliant future uh, in nuclear thermal propulsion and nuclear electric propulsion. And I think it's going to take that to get us to Mars because right now it'd take us seven or eight months with conventional chemical propulsion. Once you got there, you'd have to stay on the surface a year or two until the planets realigned so that you could get back in seven or eight months. I totally I, agree. I think that's the only way we can get there. I, I think we got to go faster. Absolutely. Marshall has partnered with Auburn University's National Center for Additive Manufacturing Excellence uh, to improve the uh, performance of liquid rocket engines. Liquid uh, rocket engines serve as the core stage for NASA's space launch system, also managed at Marshall. How can, we, the, how can advancements in additive manufacturing and liquid rocket engine performance be le leveraged by NASA to mitigate Artemis admission delays? We're doing that all the time. All of those new uh, discoveries, uh, we improve as we go. That's the whole point of uh, the development of the space program. The President's budget request proposed uh, funding the space operations account below the level required for full operational maintenance of the International Space Station and the crew and cargo program, as well as future commercial low Earth orbit destinations. What strategies is NASA exploring to ensure operational flexibility within the outlined budget while maintaining its commitment uh, uh, to transi transitioning from the International Space Station to commercial low-Earth orbit platforms by 20, 
uh, 30 and integrating commercial services without interruption. Are you asking specifically about the end of the International Space Station? Yes, sir. Okay, that's 2031. We want to keep it going for the next uh, six years. Uh, why? Because look at all the science that's on it, but we want to replace it with commercial stations so that all the science, the training, all the things that we do in low Earth orbit can be done on a commercial station, which at the same time has a business model that they can make money on a commercial station, bringing business off the face of the Earth up to LEO. Now, uh, we have put some serious incentive money into three commercial companies to build a commercial space station. And uh, that is the intent by 2031 when we would deorbit the space station uh, that there would be the commercial stations ready to go. Thank you, Mr. Administrator. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Yes, sir. Gentlemen's time's expired. Uh, we're down to just a few minutes to go vote. And so if it's okay with you, Mr. Administrator, we will reconvene as soon as we get through with the last vote. Okay. How many votes do you have, Mr. Camp? Seven. Oh my. Yeah. Uh, they're but they're two minute votes. Okay. Two minute votes. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you if, very if much. If you make two minute votes, you've done a miracle <laughs> more than I've ever seen. <laughs> well, we're gonna try. And now I've got to run down there in two minutes too. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thanks. <laughs>